Hello and welcome to Curtis Stage Tutorials. This tutorial is going to be an illustrator and we're going to use the Pathfinder to create a drawing. Um, and today we're going to do an angry bird. So let's get started in, uh, in Illustrator. Uh, I'm going to open up a new document, File New, and I'm just going to keep it maybe six inches by six inches. Uh, one thing that I like to do is if I know that I'm going to put this back onto the web and I'm not going to print this out, I might change the color mode to RGB. I'll leave the roster effects at 300 ppi if this goes back into Photoshop. All right, I'm going to click OK to that and I have a new artboard here. So what I want to do the first step is I want to create a circle with my ellipse tool. So I'm going to go over here to my tools and grab an ellipse and I'm going to have no fill on this and just a stroke. Now the stroke, I'm going to get a little fancy with this stroke here. I want to have it a five point oval so that it kind of is an uneven line when I make this stroke. And I'll have the uh, stroke at uh, one point's fine. So I'm going to draw a circle on my artboard. And maybe I will have the, uh, maybe I'll have the stroke a little bit wider for now. We can always change that later. All right. Um, of course, the Angry Birds are not exactly circular, so I'm going to use my white arrow tool and change this a little bit. I'm going to make it a little higher on the top. So what I do is I grab this anchor at the very top here and I drag it. Sometimes you have to click on the anchor and on it again to get it. Otherwise, you'll sometimes drag the whole path. Remember, the anchors make up the path. So right now I have four anchors around this head or this body of the Angry Bird. So I'm going to grab the right hand anchor now and drag it down a little bit into the right. This is going to be the front of the face over here. All right, I'm going to draw some feathers that are going to go on top. So I'm going to take my ellipse tool. I'm going to click off this and take my ellipse tool and do the same thing. I'm going to draw maybe one like this and then I'm going to duplicate this. A couple ways to duplicate. Uh, I could do a command C, command V and duplicate like that. So that's one way. I could do option drag. So if I take my black arrow tool and hold down option, I could, I could drag this and make a copy. So that's another way. A third way would be to option and arrow any of my arrow keys on the keyboard. So I just clicked option and then arrow key to the right and it didn't look like it made another, another path, but it did. Here it is. There it is. Okay. So either way, however you're going to do it, I'm going to put one on top of the other and I want to turn this one. So I'm going to hover my mouse close to the top edge and turn this and I'll bring both of these drag select over them and bring them down over the top of the bird right here. So this is going to be the bird feathers coming off the top of the head. We're going to make one of the red angry birds. So I'm going to do something like that. I want it overlapping here on the top of the head because we're going to use our pathfinder next and, and unite this whole shape. So let's go to our Pathfinder now. It's right over here. If you don't find the panel Pathfinder, all your panels are in Window. So I can go to Window and then all the way down here to P Pathfinder. Mine's on. So I want to select all of these objects with my black arrow tool. I'm going to drag select. When I say drag select, I mean click on my artboard and drag like I'm drawing a box over these and it'll select all three paths. How do I know I have three paths? If I look at my layers panel, and I open up my layer one, I've got one, two, three paths in there. Okay, so I've got them all selected. And now I'm going to pick the shape mode in the, in the Pathfinder of Unite. And see how then it, it makes the feathers a part of the head. All right, good. Let's move this to the side here. Move our, move our layers panel over. So now what I want to do is I'm going to duplicate this uh, image here. You'll see why in a second. So I'm going to duplicate this path, the whole thing. Again, I can use any one of the techniques that I want to use, but I want this path to be exactly on top of the one below it. So I'm going to do Command C for copy and then Command F for paste front. And, and it doesn't look like it, but now I have two paths right on top of each other. If I look in my, if I look here in my uh, layer stack here, my paths, I've got two. Now for this top path, I'm going to choose that top path and I know that it's chosen because if I look over here on my path, I've got the little circle there. That means it's chosen whether I'm on that lay path layer or not. This is chosen. And I'm going to take the stroke off this and put on a fill color 
of red. Perfect. Now, the background, I, the, I want this background stroke. It's, it's kind of half on and half on this background stroke. So I'm gonna just size this down a little bit by holding shift and option, dragging the upper right hand corner and sizing it down a little bit. Holding shift and option will keep the sizing on center. See how, I'll, I'll be extreme here. See how it stays on center? It also keeps my aspect ratio the same if I hold shift and option. So I'm gonna just nudge that down in size just a tad, like that. I don't wanna see any white, if possible, around it, but I just wanna bring it down a little bit. I can also increase my path below thicker later if I need to. All right, we're gonna create the face, but before we do that, we're gonna create a little like underbelly of the bird down here. So let's do that using an oval as well. So I'm gonna click off these two paths to make sure I'm not on them. I'm gonna go get my oval tool again, or my ellipse tool, and I'm gonna change the foreground color of that to kind of a beige. And I do not wanna have a stroke on this. I'm gonna draw a, a, maybe a circle, somewhat of a circle like that over the side off my artboard. And I'm gonna drag it with my black arrow tool on the bird somewhat like this. So maybe down here a little bit, kind of half on, half off. We can always adjust it a little bit more later, but what I'm gonna do next, you'll see why we had to make two paths here for the red and the black because I'm gonna use this red to cut into this underbelly here with a circle. I wanna chop this bottom part off right here. So we're gonna use our Pathfinder again to do this. I'm gonna select just my red path and my beige path. So I'm gonna hold shift down. I can select them both right here by holding shift down. I don't wanna, I don't wanna have my bottom path selected, my outline. So once I have these both selected here, now I'm gonna use my Pathfinder, and I'm gonna to go to the Pathfinder of Divide. Now it doesn't look like it did much on the Divide, but it actually cut this in two halves using the red. So what I'm gonna do now is go to my white arrow tool, my Direct Select tool, and select just this area down below and hit Delete. There we go. I got the bottom of the kind of underbelly tuft. All right, let's make some eyes. So I'm gonna click. make sure I click off of all of these paths and I'm gonna to go to my oval tool again or my lips tool this time I'm gonna do a fill of white and a stroke of black and I'm gonna create the eye, eyes here the outer eye first so and I, and I want the eyes kind of down in this area and we can always adjust their size later if we don't get them right and adjust their shape so there's the first eye and I want that stroke to be a little bit bigger so I'm gonna create a little bit bigger and now I'm gonna make a duplicate of this with my black arrow tool. I'll just hold down option and drag and I've got a duplicate. Now I don't want both eyes perfectly circle, circular and I don't want them the same size because this eye is looking to be, a, it's you know, a little bit of perspective here. So I want this eye on the left to be a little bigger than this eye on the right. So I'm gonna click on the eye on the right, hold shift down and size this down a little bit and then bring it over. I want them connected. And then I want to take the top anchor with my white arrow tool and I want to just kind of squeeze these a little bit. So you can see, let me zoom in here. So I'm going to move this back up because I moved it down. I'm going to click on that top anchor and pull down just a tad. We, they're going to be angry, so I want the eyes to be not wide, like surprised. I want them to be kind of angry here. So I have to click on that anchor so you see the Bezier handles there. And then I'm going to pull the top down a little bit on both of those. So something like that, kind of nice. All right, now let's make the pupils of the eye. So I'm gonna get my oval or ellipse tool again. This time, no stroke, we're switching it. And this time, I want a black fill. And I'm just going to create a little circle in here, a little pupil. Just one of those, and then I'm gonna duplicate it with my black arrow tool. I'll just hold down Option and drag, and so now I've got two eyes here, and I'll make this other one just slightly smaller than the other one because it is a little farther away. And they might be a little googly because they're so mad that their eyes are kind of crossing. So I'm gonna maybe do something like that. All right, good. So now I wanna make the eyebrows. Again, it doesn't matter what order I do this in, but I'm gonna make the eyebrows in here. So I'm gonna go in, instead of my lips tool, I'm gonna go get my rectangular tool and fill black, no stroke. And I'm gonna draw just a straight old rectangle here. Something like that. I think it's a little big, we'll, we'll see. Now, obviously that doesn't look like the eyebrow for Angry Birds yet. First of all, I wanna turn it. He's gonna start looking angry now. 
And I'm going to bring it down here. They have kind of a unibrow, by the way. So I'm going to turn this, and I'm going to go to my white arrow tool, and I'm going to adjust some of these anchor points. Now, what's kind of cool is when I click on an anchor with my white arrow tool, I'm going to zoom into this. When I click on an anchor here, I can use my... I can adjust by dragging this anchor point, but I can also use my arrow keys up and down. See, I'm pressing my arrow key up and down to move that anchor point. Of course, I can click the whole path and move it up or down with my arrow keys as well. So I'm gonna make an eyebrow that kind of looks like that, and maybe the front anchor, I could pull it, or I could just use my arrow keys. So my front, I want the front of the eyebrow towards the middle of the eye to be thinner. Now I wanna duplicate this, so again, option drag, and then I want to reverse this or reflect it. So I'm gonna go up here to my top options bar and go to Object, Transform, Reflect. And I want it to be vertical access at 90 degrees by default, that's what it is. And I can even hit this little preview button to show me what it's gonna look like. Yes, indeed, that's right. So I'm gonna click OK. And I'm gonna bring this eyebrow in like that. Now I don't want it sticking off the side, so this eyebrow is gonna come back in so I'm gonna, with my white arrow tool, and that's the tool that we use to adjust anchors within the path, I'm gonna use my white arrow tool and I'm gonna bring this eyebrow back in and I'll just put it inside the line like that. And then I might adjust the path here so that this, the eyebrows get a little bit more slanted and I want them to be exactly equal. So something like that, possibly. Maybe this anchor down here goes up a little bit. Something like that. All right, so that's what we got so far, very nice. Now let's make the beak. Now the beak I'm gonna draw, looks like my anchor here is a little bit over. I'm gonna move that in, all right. Now I'm gonna draw the beak with my pen tool. So let's go to our pen tool. Make sure you clicked off any of your, your vector drawings so far, your paths. I'm gonna click on my pen tool. I just want the regular pen tool. And I'm gonna go get a light orange color. The top of the beak will do first. So I'm gonna do light orange for the top of the beak dark orange for the bottom of the beak. So I'm gonna do the light orange here, and then I'm gonna, I'm gonna make a couple points here, a couple anchor points with my pen tool, because I want some curves on here. So I'm gonna start my anchor right here, somewhere like that, that's the first anchor. Then I'm gonna go up to the middle of the eye, and I'm gonna click and drag to the right. You see how when I click and drag to the right, it moves the anchor the opposite, or it moves the, um, the Bezier curve the opposite way. So I'm going to kind of to the right and down. And now I'm going to click here. Um, let me zoom into this. I'm going to click here and make a third point. But I want to get rid of this Bezier handle because I don't want the curve. Well, watch. When I just click here, it's going to automatically make a curve. Now, that would be okay for the beak, actually. But I don't want it to be like that. I want to have a little more control down the tip of the beak here. So I'm going to click on this and convert this anchor point so that this side does not have the Bezier handle. See how both sides have the Bezier handles here? I'm gonna click that and it gets rid of that Bezier handle. So now I could have a straight line. I don't want a straight line. I wanna have kind of a slight curve to this, but I want the curve to be down where the beak ends. So now I'm gonna click, it'll be mostly a straight line, but then see how when I drag down, I have a little bit more control over that curve now than if I just let it kind of do what it was doing. Something like that. And now I'm gonna complete this path, because I'm not done yet, even though it looks like the beak's done here. I'm gonna complete this path by clicking the anchor over there. And it'll actually round this off for me when I'm going back to this anchor. And of course, with my white arrow tool, I could adjust this beak on the anchor points, so I can click and drag and adjust the beak if it's not big enough. I can move it over here, move it up higher, something like that. I want it to go above the, so there's no red showing between the eyes. So something like that for the top beak. I can make it more snarly if I want, whatever, but that looks like a good bird beak. Now let's make the bottom one. S make sure you click off of everything so you're not on any of your paths. I was on my actual red path here. So I'm off the path and I'm gonna go to back to my pen tool and I wanna switch the color now to the darker orange. Okay, so now I've, I'm gonna start this other beak right down here below this one, and then I'll join them in a second. And so 
and and I may want a stroke on that beak later, so I may put that back on there in a second. So, but let me make the beaks first, and then we'll put the stroke on. So I'm going to go here and start my first line of my path. We're going to kind of make an upside down triangle. I'm going to do the second line here, and then I'm going to go down to the bottom and kind of do another Bezier curve this way. So I pulled it to the left and see how it kind of curved out to the right. And then I'm going to finish this path by just joining to where I first made my first anchor point, right there. This is going to be the bottom of the beak. I'll get my white arrow tool and I'll kind of maybe move this a little bit up or down and then I can move this into place. But I want to put a stroke around these. So I'm going to get my black arrow tool, click on the first one and go to stroke and go black and then maybe make it a little bigger so it matches the eye, so I think maybe three. And then go here to the bottom one and make it bigger so it has a stroke and make it three as well on the stroke size, three points, so something like that. Now I want to make sure there's no overlap here, so I'm going to grab, grab this thing and with my arrow keys move it. And you can make it look like the beak is open a little bit by, by having, it, having a little space right there. You can turn it so that it feels open and then of course you have to make sure that it's doing something like that. Move my, so my, uh, there you go, something like that. It's gonna be, there we go. Okay, so we've got our beak there. Now what I wanna do is I wanna draw the uh, shadow, or no, I'll say draw the tail and then we'll maybe draw some shadows here. I wanna draw some shadows under the eye. So we'll do that first actually. Okay, so I want to go back to my, I want to click off everything, make sure I'm clicked off any of my paths, and I want to go back to my ellipse tool back here. So ellipse tool, if I hold down my mouse on the rectangle tool, I'll go to the ellipse tool. And I want to pick kind of a darker red here with no stroke on this dark shadows under the eye. Now, I, this red is not dark enough for me, so I'm going to open up my color palette. So I'm going to go to window and color, and I'm going to bring my color palette over here. And I'm gonna pick just a little bit darker red than that. So I'm gonna slide this over a little bit so it's a darker maroon color. So that looks good. Something like that. And now I'm gonna make the shadows around the eyes. Okay, so to do that, I'm just gonna draw them, you know, kind of over here with no stroke on them. And I'm just gonna draw kind of a ellipse like that. And I'm gonna take my black arrow tool and move them in here. Well, I've got a problem because it's, on, it's above the eyeballs. Well, I don't want that. So I'm gonna to go to my layers palette, and I'm just going to switch the order that these are in. Look at that path that I just drew is the very top path. It goes in order. If you're familiar with Photoshop, it goes in order. So I'm going to drag that path down below all the eyes but above the red body. So then it's like that, and I can then adjust it. And then I've got this kind of, because you know he's killing a lot of pigs, so he's got dark circles under his eyes and he's very pissed, and they're up all night destroying pigs' castles and whatever. So now I'm going to do option I'm going to option click on this oval and drag it so I just have another eye dark circle. So something like that. Now the Angry Birds, the way the designers have designed them for Rovio is they've made some shadows over here down the side of the bird. I'm going to move this up just a tad. So they've made some shadows over here on the side. So I'm just going to use this same one and option click and drag and make, make a um, copy. And I'll make a bigger circle right there and then maybe one more and maybe smaller. So I'm gonna hold down shift and make that smaller and bring that up in place. So that's kind of like the side of the bird and the circles get smaller as they go back. That's kind of what they got on the red bird has that. All right, so let's make the tail back here. So I'm gonna go back to my rectangle tool, go to rectangle, I'm gonna fill it with black with no stroke on it. And I'm gonna just draw an initial rectangle, something like that. And then with my white arrow tool, I'm gonna to grab my anchor and I'm gonna pull this up or I can use my arrow keys and pull that down so that I'm making a kind of a tail shape. And I'm gonna pull this maybe in so it's uneven a little bit. And then I'm gonna make a copy of this, of course. To I wanna make a couple tail feathers here. And this whole thing's gotta be smaller. So I'm gonna on my black arrow tool, hold down shift and size that down. And then maybe I might turn it and make it a little longer and turn it a little bit more. I don't really know what their tail looks like right now. I'm not looking at one of the characters. So something maybe that's turned a little too much, something like that. 
and then the, actually I'll get rid of this one and just use this one as a copy. So now that I've made kind of the size, then I'm just going to turn this one the other way so it matches that way. Something like that. I got some tail, fe tail feathers going. Now I'm going to bring all three of these together and I could use my Pathfinder to join all three of those paths so I can merge those paths. I'll take my Pathfinder tool, click on all three with my black arrow tool and go right here to merge. Merge them all together. And I can size them down if they're too big. You can draw them any size you want. It's a vector graphic. I can even squash them a little bit and pull them this way so they're a little longer. All right? By merging them all together, it's kind of nice. Now, I want them to be below every other path here because right now, this isn't good. The tail's sitting on top of the body. So I want this path to go all the way down to the bottom below everything. Something like that. Nice. Now we can get more detailed and do shadows underneath the feathers, just the same way we did shadows under the eyes. We can do shadows under the feathers and a shadow along this back edge here. Let's do it, and I could even do another shadow down here on the bottom of the bird right here. So let's do a shadow along this back edge. I'm going to get my pen tool again. I'm going to make sure that I click off every path here so I'm not selected on any path with my black arrow tool. And then I get my pen tool. And I'm going to do the shadow fill the same color as I've got right here. So I'm going to get my, um, I'm going to actually just go and pick with my, uh, with my ink dropper tool or my eyedropper tool. I'm going to pick that color and make a shadow. So that's going, so it's the same color as these and going along the back. Now I'll get my, now I'll get my pen tool. I'm going to start the shadow down here, start the path with one anchor point there. Maybe click in the middle, kind of where the feather is. And I'm going to click and drag up, mimicking the red line. I'm going to click and drag up and over, something like that, to the right a little bit. Then I'll make another line right there. And you can see that I've kind of got a shadow going. And I'll make another anchor point right here. I'll talk about that anchor point in a second. And then I'm going to finish this path right there. Now, I can quit here and take my white arrow tool and drag this in. And that makes kind of a nice shadow. I probably have to fix this anchor point right here on the side. So I can kind of click that anchor point right here and then use my arrow key to move it over. But I, you know, I don't want it to go too far. So I might have to pull my bezier handle up a little bit to just get rid of that red. So I could kind of stop right there, get a little bit of red. But I can also convert this so it's a little bit more curvy right there. So if I click on that, if I go to my pen tool, and go to my Convert Anchor Point tool and click and drag. Now I can take this and instead of making a point, I can make kind of a curve. So I'll make, I'll just drag it down a little bit or up, but up would do this. So that's not very good unless you want your shadow to go that way. It might not be too bad. I'm going to drag it down kind of like this and really kind of get a curve going here if I can. Maybe the other way would be fine. Maybe something like this, and then then I've got it more of a then I've got more of a curve going on inside this. So and if I go back to my black arrow tool or my white arrow tool, I can even push this back in now. This anchor, I can push it around and move it, so it goes, looks something like that. So it's not straight ahead. So you can make that same kind of shadow underneath here, a little darker beige shadow under the bottom. And you could do the same kind of shadow up on top up here. Let's do that up here with the feathers. So I'm going to go to my um, pen tool once again. So I've got the convert on right now. I'm going to go back to my pen tool. And what's cool is I can tear this off here. You see how I so watch how I do this. I'm going to click here and right over here, this little bit of button on the side here of all these tools, I can just tear that off. So I have my pen tools handy right here. So I'm going to click right here. I've still got that same color. Uh, of the fill color, no, no stroke. And I'm going to go here and maybe click here. And I'm mimicking this path here a little bit. And click there. And maybe click over here and pull to the right, something like that. And then I'll click right here, making kind of a weird curve. And I'll click right there. But I can go fix that curve again with my white arrow tool and my convert tool if I want. So I'm going to pull this anchor back, something like that. So I can make a shadow here. Let me get it up a little bit. Sometimes you have to mess with these a little bit to get them kind of the way you want them. For the shadow, I'll move it down and over. So something like that. I don't really like that curve in there, so I'm going to go to my 
convert in here and pull that so it's a little more rounded and not a straight line. So you can curves, pull that anchor up. So sometimes you have to zoom way in to see these anchors because they're they might be a little messed up here. Let me go around. I'm gonna pull this up. It's kind of like that. So we've got kind of something like that. It doesn't have to be perfect, it's a shadow. Um, I'm gonna go here and move that one so it's even there, not cutting off, and I may have to adjust that. Now I can take this and copy it by option, click and drag, and I can use one to do both. And then I'll turn this a little bit with my black arrow tool. So I'll go and turn it and shrink it down a little bit because it's not the same size as the other one. So I'll shrink it and turn it and kind of use the same shadow on both. So when I zoom out, I've got maybe that kind of shadow going on the back of the bird feathers. And you can do the same thing down at the bottom and below the beak if you wanted to really detail out your angry bird. All right, so this, is, this has been a tutorial in Illustrator on using simple shapes to create drawings and also using our Pathfinder to, to kind of cookie cut objects around so that we can uh, kind of create better drawings just using simple, simple shapes. All right, thanks once again and uh, we'll see you next time.